I just realized I made a huge mistake. I was going to make the neck out of these parts, and I was gonna make the sides out of this. This morning I thought, well, I'll make the side out of this, and I sawed it in half. Oh, that was a big mistake. I was going to use it to make the neck. Oh, now I'm not so sure what I'll do. That was a big mistake. press I've kind of got some measurements rough measurements marked on here let me just show you the setup here I've got this nail it's polished and it's rounded off and the bit opposes that and I have a stop on this and it will only let it go down to so many thousandths of an inch down so I can only drill through to a certain point and that'll leave that amount of thickness in this and right now I'm just going to drill this general area right here. I'm, I've got uh, Caleb assisting me to keep the thing down so it doesn't lift back up when the bit goes back up. That's all I'm going to do right there for now, and then I'm going to reset the thickness and drill the rest of this at a certain thickness. Now we're going to drill the rest of this at a shallower, or actually it's going to be thinner, the, the, the rest of it, so we're really going deeper. In the wind, it's in the wind that you're leaving me again. There's no disguise, it's in your eyes. You can't fool me this time Before you up and leave me There's something you should know Just sit right down beside me Just once before you go Remember when we first met We had a love so fine I think that'll do Okay, we're gonna drill the top now, and I've got the thing set for this. I've got it set uh, conservatively, so I should be able to drill most of the top with this. We bound, we love each other until the end of time. It's in the wind, it's in the wind that you're leaving me again. There's no disguise, it's in your eyes. You can't fool me this time. wondering why I even do that that's just to establish some kind of a thickness on this and now I can take a um, grinder and just grind out the down to the, the bottom of those holes and, and I'm even a little conservative on that and I'll actually leave the very tip end of the bit uh, exposed there so I can get pretty close to a depth uh, just with the grinder then I, that saves a lot of uh, hand work and with the way my hands are these days I need to save all the work I can. This will get me close, it will get me in the ballpark. As you can see I'm outside, I'm getting ready to carve these plates with the grinder and this of course will be a very rough carving. Um, I'm going to start with the spruce first. I don't want to ruin either one of these pieces, but I figure if I start with the spruce first, I'll have my technique down. I've always got more spruce. I don't have more of this. So I really want to make sure I don't mess this up. I know you found another who wants your love so fine. But darling, please don't leave me. Just take As you can see, I was a little conservative. I've left the marks, but that's okay. I would prefer to leave that, and then that way I know I'm not too thin. That really lightened this up a lot. It's much, much lighter than it was just a minute ago. 
you can tell that and here's of course a lot of the sawdust you can see has come off of it well I guess I'll get brave and do this one now I'm gonna give my hands just a few minutes to rest though because my hands are pretty sore these days and I don't want to strain it too much holding this thing it's kind of heavy okay I've give myself a little break here and I'm gonna go ahead and try to carve this it's in the way Disguise, it's in your eyes. You can't fool me this time. It's in the wind, 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 you win again. Well, there you go. I think I'm successful. I don't think I created any problems. Much lighter than it was a little while ago, but yet there's still a very long way to go. Well, I took a little break from carving this one and went back to this one and dished it out with the grinder. You know, probably I'm a little too conservative. I probably could have taken out some more, but you know what? Uh, you, you're better off if you just quit while you're ahead because <laughs> It just the least little wrong thing and it's all over and you ruin a one-of-a-kind piece and with all the work I've done on this already I did not want that to happen so it's gonna be a while now before it all uh, changes shape very much I'll keep you posted well there's another day dawned on this and uh, I have just finished using the little finger plane just getting it all cleaned up pretty much down you can still just see the faintest hint of the dimple of the end of the drill bit in places but it's pretty much cleaned up I'm going to take the uh, Dremel tool and clean out this area to remove some extra wood care of that that just lightens it up some it I could probably take out quite a bit more of that because that is pretty chunky up in there mostly just for lightening it up a little bit it feels very light now compared to the way it did as a whole thick top all right I'm gonna do some detailed measuring now and start trying to carve the actual graduations in there I don't think I'm down to any of the critical areas yet but we'll see that as we measure it in detail. I've actually changed my mind yet again. Instead of carving the detail in this, I'm gonna go ahead and rough this out, get it up about equal to the top. And so therefore I'm gonna just clean up this until we get rid of the uh, drill marks. The only angle I can get this wood to carve is at a 45. And as long as I carve at that 45 degrees, it, it carves reasonably well that way, but otherwise it's almost impossible to carve. My friend, he took one look at me and said, girl, where you been? Well, I don't know that I can't say, but I can't try to explain. I've been searching for the sunny spot somewhere All I can find is rain It's going to take quite a bit of that and uh, you can see after even all that I b still have quite a bit of the uh, holes exposed there so it'll be a while and I'll show you some progress as we make some. For you it's probably only been moments, but for me it's been several days since I sanded this other side. You may recall that I sanded for three hours just on this one side here 
with basically no break at all. You can see how much nicer it looks than this side. Well, it's time to do the same thing to this side. I'll catch you up in about three hours from now. Thought I'd let you see that while it's wet down. Isn't that really pretty? It's amazingly pretty. After doing all of this work, I'm disappointed because I ended up with a grumpy snowman. Can you see him in there? This would be like an eye, eye, you know, and his turned up frown mouth right there. I don't know if that shows up on camera or not, but it's pretty obvious here. So I've got a grumpy snowman, and then you can see his other part of his body goes around like this. So, yeah. If I had to have something show up, a grumpy snowman is, is you know, better than some things that could have been there. Well, I've been sanding on this side for one solid hour, and it does look pretty good. It almost looks equal to the other side, but it's not quite there yet. There's, there's a, a lot of uh, little tiny imperfections that's gonna take a while to get out because the surface is so hard, it just takes forever to get them out. And just as an example, I don't know if you can see it, but like right here, there's a little scrape mark. You can see the sawdust is down in there and same way here and here. And it's really that way pretty much all over. And there's even still a tiny bit of that over here. So once I get this side completely equal to that side, then I'm gonna do the whole thing for probably another hour with 220 and try to get it as perfect as I can get it. You know, I don't think it's supposed to be easy to build the world's finest mandolin ever built by a human. I guess that's why it's taken so long. I've marked off all my measurements where I'm at presently with the top. Everything is still plenty heavy. There's nothing that I've, you know, I haven't gone past any of my measurements. And uh, in fact, uh, there's considerably more to be taken off of this. I'm just going to be doing some more carving and every so often I stop and I check my graduations. It's gonna be kind of boring, but uh, that's all I do is just do, you know, just keep carving and carving and checking and checking and it takes many hours to get it exactly precise. Spent probably a little over two hours graduating this to the detail. Honestly, it's just a first draft. Um, I'm sure it's very close now. But now I'm going to, I have an overlay here and I have all these little extra holes that are in the overlay. Those are the places where I measure the thicknesses. Thought that might be a good hint for some of you who are wanting to build things like this. You can just take your pencil after you find your pencil, which was covered up there. You can just do this and this way you can have a same reference point of, you know, each time you measure it. Anyway, we're going to uh, do that one more time and I'm thinking this will be the final time I have to do this. So that's what I do and now I go through here very carefully and measure everything and then I actually write it down to where it's at and I just write them all down and then I compare it back to my measurements that I have and I work on it and work on it and work on it. Here's what it sounds like right now. I'll let you hear it up close and then I'll carve those last details out and let you hear it again. Quite honestly, I doubt you'll hear much of a difference, but you never know. About that long. It's got a nice deep tone already. I'm sure if you put this on a mandolin right now, it would have a great sound, but you know, I'm sure it needs, you know, a few thousands here, maybe ten thousands there, that kind of thing. So that's where I'm going right now. It's been a couple of weeks since I got anything done on this mandolin. I'm gonna use my new little eight millimeter finger plane sent in to me by a wonderful viewer. 
I've already got the center pretty close to final. The outside edge is really thick and I'm going to uh, work on that and just kind of take my time going around here. This little uh, eight millimeter plane, it's like I suspected, it's much easier to push because it's so small. The narrow blade is just makes it easier to push. Now it's so small that some people would say it would be harder to, to handle and stuff, but it's really not. It's not that hard to handle. Kind of wish I would have had one of these my whole career here instead of right at the very end. But I'm glad I got one. It really might be my go-to plane from now on because it's so so easy to push. So I'll just kind of scan through here and see how thick I am. I'm pretty sure it's still pretty thick. It's still quite thick. Now I don't know what the difference is, but I'm able to carve almost any direction with this little plane right now, where I was only able to carve in one direction with the bigger planes. Although it's it's still chattery, I can. Like right here, I'm catching a little flack, so I'd have to turn and go some other direction. I made a pretty good dent in the carving of this. Uh, I've checked it uh, with my calipers here, and uh, it, uh, you know, it's pretty close, but I'm still heavy. I, there's no question. I'm going to scrape it all down smooth, and then I'm going to measure it very carefully and write the measurements down, and then I'm going to go from there. To scrape it first you know to kind of get it all level and smooth before I write those final <laughs> measurements down. You can hear it kind of chattering as I do this and that's because this swir swirly grain runs in every direction and so in some cases it's like you're scraping in grain and other places it's fine so it's, it's really a difficult wood to scrape to get it smooth And it, you rub your fingers on it like this and you can kind of tell where there's high spots and bumps and things that you want to clean up. Scraping in the opposite direction also helps you uh, get a uh, smoother finish and get rid of some of the bumps. The place I've been sure wasn't sunny pretty darn good on that side. This side here is a little rougher. A bump or two that I just kind of want to take out yet. Can't hardly feel anything there now. This side's pretty rough. as good as it needs to be for right now so I think I'll mark it with all the measurements and so I know where to go from there. As I've said before I don't really give out the numbers but I've got them written all over this top now so I know where, where I'm at and I know where I'm gonna go based on my drawing that I have here with all the measurements and I'm not far away from it. You could probably build a decent sound in mandolin with this the way it is right now but it but it is definitely heavy compared to the lower that I took apart that 1924 lower so I'm gonna make this a lot lighter yet well I say again my friends and I know I've wore this phrase out but I'm sure glad this wasn't my very first time building a mandolin with this kind of wood oh my gosh I spent maybe three minutes scraping this out here I because I you know, I was measuring from the inside, but I didn't like the way it was measuring out and I felt like I needed to take some off on this side. 
So I took a scraper and on, you know, regular maple, you could scrape it pretty clean, pretty fast. On this stuff, it scraped, you know, reasonably okay, but the problem is it leaves all the lines because the grain goes from different directions. And I have spent almost an hour now, after like two minutes of scraping, I have spent almost an hour sanding it out smooth. And I'm still not there yet. Normally scraping doesn't leave marks, but in this kind of wood, you can't scrape it where it won't leave a mark. All I know is you really don't want this to be your first project on a mandolin. You don't want to use this kind of wood. You will be sorely disappointed. Well, if you're picky, anyway. If you're not picky, then it won't be that big a deal. But if you're picky, and you're trying to make the world's finest mandolin, well, then you've got to spend a lot of time getting this smooth. Oh, well. It is what it is, as I say. It's kind of one of those deals where you really can't get it perfect. No matter how hard you try, it's just going to be... <laughs> pretty darn good, but it won't ever be perfect. And this is the kind of wood you definitely do need a sanding block because of the hard and soft, you know, interspersed pieces. I mean, it's, you know, like one piece is hard, next piece is soft. And so you need this to span all of that and keep it level. Your fingers will just follow the contours and you'll end up with a wavy feeling finish. It'll be smooth, but it'll be wavy feeling. Ask me how I know. Normally I like to use my fingers, but you can't do it on this. Well, he took me gigging and he took me fishing. We went swimming in the pond. My friend, he made me laugh and smile. And said, where you been so friends another weekend has passed since the last clip I filmed on this and I know I'm beating a dead horse here when I keep saying this but I can tell you for absolute certainty in the 40 years I've been building instruments it's not quite 40 years but nearly 40 years I have never not one time ever sanded a piece of wood as much as I've sanded this not ever. This is the most sanding I've ever done on anything in my whole life. And it is the hardest piece of wood to sand I've ever seen. You know, I, I know I'm also beating the theme, building the world's finest mandolin ever built by a human. I'm, I know I'm beating that to death. But I am absolutely insistent that this will be a flawless piece of wood when I put the stain on it. I, if you look at it closely, I mean, it is beautiful already. It would look beautiful if I stained it. I don't know if you can see it up close, but there's these little marks in here, and I want them all out. And they're so, they're minor. They're very little, tiny things. But I can't build the world's finest instrument if I leave them in there. This has to be out of there. In the past, I haven't sanded it enough to get those out, and you really can't hardly see them anyway once you put your stains and finishes on. But my thought is that if I get them completely out, when I put the stain on, it'll just be that much more, I don't know, I, I just think it's going to pop that much better. Um, it'll pop already anyway, but I think it'll pop more like, almost like a mirror type reflection thing whenever I get it completely glass smooth. And I'm telling you for sure, it's hard to get it glass smooth. I'm using 220 and I want it at least that smooth. I think what I'm gonna do is, you know, get it completely smooth with the 220. Then I think I'm gonna go over it more like lightly with the 320, which is overkill for wood, don't get me wrong. 220 is basically overkill for wood. Not for the world's finest mandolin. So we'll see. 
but I really absolutely can tell you for certainty I've never sanded a piece of wood this much in my life. By the way, I have it all carved on the inside. I have it scraped on the inside. Now the inside I don't really plan to sand. The reason is all of the old timers will tell you that you don't want to sand your bare wood like that. It'll clog the pores of the wood. I sort of don't agree with that really. I mean, I think it'll vibrate out anyway, but I'm just kind of going with tradition on the inside. I'm not sanding it. I'm just scraping it. Smooth. I have weighed this to see if it matches my target weight that I've kind of been going by over the years. And my target weight is 186 grams, 186 grams, and I'm at 188 grams right now. So I'm very, very, very close. I'm hoping some additional scraping and sanding will get me there. And by the way, the scale has a two gram resolution. So, you know, it, it takes, I don't know, sometimes you can trip to the next one with just the least amount of difference and other times it takes forever. So it's hard to, hard to say where I'm at there between the 186 and 188, but, but uh, we're doing really, really well. And I'm going to just continue to do that. I'm not gonna film it, but that's what I'm working on. And it's taking me hours of sanding to get this perfect. But it will be perfect when I'm done. Well, my friends, yet another day has passed here at the Rosa String Works workshop. And in that time, I believe I'm finished with these plates. I've got the back finished and the top finished. Now, I say finished, you know, I do always carve a rose in here, and I will get to that. I might do that right, you know, I might even do it today, but. I'll get to that fairly soon and I'll get that rose carved in there and of course I'll show you how I do that. But I think what I'm going to do today right now, or at least in the immediate <laughs> near future, is I'm going to work on the sides. Let me turn the camera down here on the table and I'll show you what I've got to work with. This is pretty much all the rest of the material I had or was able to salvage out of that board. Now I could make sides out of this. Um, but I, I just realized I made a huge mistake. I was going to make the neck out of these parts and I was going to make the sides out of this. This morning I thought, well, I'll make the side out of this and I sawed it in half. Oh, that was a big mistake. I was going to use it to make the neck. Oh, now I'm not so sure what I'll do. That was a big mistake on my part. I wasn't thinking, oh man. So I'm really disappointed that I did that. It may not be a big deal. There may still be enough here to work with. In fact, I think there should be because I cut this to the width of the side and the neck shouldn't be any taller than this. So I may still be able to work with that. I'll set this aside to do the neck. I'm pretty sure I can still get that out of there. Doggone it though, I wish I hadn't done that. So I guess I will work with this to make my sides. Um, it's beautiful, beautiful wood. You can see all the curl in there. You know, I'd like to use this part because it's got the most curl in it, but it's got this white stripe through it. I don't like that. I don't think that white stripe's gonna to amount to anything once I actually apply stains and varnishes and stuff. I don't think that's gonna show up much. At least that's my thought. I really don't know for sure. Yeah, I don't know. I would, but this is the most active part of the grain. I mean, it, it gets a little less as you move out in here. I could perhaps maybe get the side out of this part right here. You know, there's a lot of options. I mean, a bazillion options. I'm still recovering from making the boo-boo here of cutting that. But I, I don't think that's gonna cause me much of a problem. In fact, let me um, get my, my uh, pattern and lay it on here and see what it looks like. Well, I regret it, I really do, but uh, I think I can salvage it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and actually glue it back together, believe it or not, and clamp it really tightly. It'll only have a very tiny seam there. 
That seam will be disguised because it'll be down here in the dark black heel. You won't see it there. And here, it, it's hard to explain it, but we'll, it will run through a, ver a, a diagonal here and there will only be a very, very faint line right here on the back side of the peg head. The top side, you won't see it at all because it'll be covered with uh, veneer. So while I regret it, it's not a, a deal breaker, it's just aggravating. So I'll fix that, and I don't think that's going to be really much of a problem, much of an issue. If it is, we'll do something else, but right now I don't think that's going to be much of a problem. So it, I am back to deciding what to do about the sides, and I think I'll just cut out material out of these. While I, I'm not crazy about that discoloration, it really does have the most pattern right there. I hate to uh, just cut past here and waste this center section but it might be the best thing to do. I don't really know. I'll think on it some more and I'll show you what I decide. The place I've been true wasn't sunny The man is sure was blue Been all around this wide world And there ain't no friend like you when the blade is doing more burning than cutting. That's an old blade and uh, it's seen its better days, but it got the job done. I only needed uh, two pieces out of this, I think. Even though this blade's kind of burning, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one. And I've got more than thick enough here to run it through my sander and get rid of all that burn, so I'm not too worried about it. This will probably be the last cut this blade ever makes. instead of uh, cleaning up the burn marks that was adding more burn marks so I'm sure this sandpaper is pretty much gone too so I'll have to pause and uh, put some new paper on here and start again showed you enough of that process. I've still got quite a ways to go. I can tell they're quite thick yet. It, and I put fine sandpaper on here, 120 grain, which that's pretty fine for a sander. And the problem with that is that that even causes it to burn more, but it should be a little less sanding for me by hand later um, because it, this stuff is very hard to sand as I've mentioned before. So, I'll just keep going and I'll show you what it looks like when I get there. Well, I got uh, four pieces sanded to about 75 thousandths of an inch. 
Um, yeah, the problem is it did darken them up a little bit. I, I ran it through really, really lightly on the last couple of passes to try to knock off some of the darkness and it helped a little bit. But basically, I'm just going to have to sand that all down by hand once I get it on the mandolin. Um, it'll come off. Uh, you know, it, it really does come off. And you need to sand it to the 220 anyway. But uh, it's not going to be that hard to do. But it will still require some sanding. We'll move on to the bending process. Blah, blah. 